Yo, what's up, bro? Good morning. It's 6 a.m. right now. I haven't even gone to the gym yet. This is really, really rare. I don't think I ever do a video during my solitude practice, but I was thinking about something. So I woke up this morning and I felt like overwhelmed, like overwhelmed, I guess is the best word for it. I've been extremely busy this past week going through stress in the relationship. It's super weird, bro. Stress in the relationship, but my my coaching and my my YouTube and like my business stuff is going extremely well. So it's like this weird contrast, right? And so I'm taking on more clients, but I'm also dealing with like behind the scenes stuff also around Valentine's Day. Such a weird dynamic, bro. And I was listening to a podcast two or three days ago and I heard someone say, I'm pre I believe it was Ed Milet, but I like, I listen to a lot of podcasts, so I can't be a hundred percent sure. I heard someone say, be where your feet are. And it hit me really, really hard because a lot of the time I'm elsewhere, right? My brain is going on about something else that I maybe like something that's been going on or something that's going to be going on. I'm anticipating something. I'm thinking about something. And it's interesting because with meditation, you learn a lot about being where your feet are, but to have it put into words like that and almost make it tangible because you can think like, Oh, be where your feet are. My feet are currently planted on like on the floor right in front of my seat right now. So to be where my feet are means to be right here. It's kind of like that saying be here now, but it's put into words in such a way that it's physically tangible and it reminded me of the of the idea and the concept of like, when you're doing work stuff, be at work. When you're with people you care about, be with the people you care about. When you're making videos, be making the video. Like, it's very important to stay focused on wherever you're at. You know what I mean? Like, be focused on the thing that you're doing so that you can do it to the best of your ability. There's a book called The Four Agreements. And I believe the last agreement is always do your best. And in that chapter, I believe he talks about like, in order to always be able to do your best, you have to put 100% into each thing that you do. Each moment has to be given 100% of your attention. And to be able to do that, you have to be able to observe and be aware of the thoughts in your mind and the way that your brain is handling different circumstances, different perspectives, different things going on. It's just interesting, man. And I woke up this morning again, feeling just like overwhelmed. So I came, I went and did my, like, I took my progress picture, weighed myself by the way, 183, like on the dot 183, feeling good. 183, took my progress picture, came in here, read my journal, did my reflect and reassess, did my, like, I my outline my day. And then I just sat back and I've been thinking, I did actually meditation for the first time in a while. Like I, I don't meditate that much anymore, but I decided to meditate and it's like, I just have to like relax, you know, there, <laughs> I still work a normal job, right? Barely. I work like three days a week. I'm about to cut it down to two. And even on my days off, I feel like on my days off, I'm working more than when I'm actually at work. I feel like I'm doing so much and I was writing in my reflections, uh, like my reflection area in my journal today, I was writing about how like my, <laughs> when I, when I do things like this, when I, when I really give up and give my all to something, right. I put a hundred percent into things. And whenever I start to feel this resistance, whenever I start to feel this overwhelming feeling, I, I immediately pull back. I used to at least, but now because I've built discipline, because I've built healthy ways to deal with stress and understand the way that my brain will react to things. Like I understand how my, how I'll like I'm conditioned to react and I know how to choose a different reaction, choose a different response. I can now like, I can witness stress and I can witness situations happen and choose how I want to respond to it. And there's a book, The Way of Art. I'm just 
going off today on books and quotes and shit. This is common actually, because I, I read a lot of books and I, whenever I he, read something that hits really deep or like I hear a quote that really hits, I write it in like a, a notion document just because I love quotes because they encapsulate so much for me. But in the war of art, he talks about like the whole book is about resistance. So I'm just getting tired. The whole book is about resistance. And he talks about how as a creative person, if whatever it is that you feel the most resistance towards is probably the thing that you should do. Right. So for me in the past, it was music. I had a ton of resistance around actually making music, but when I did it, I felt super fulfilled. And so it, it taught me that I had to actually do it, but I never had the discipline to actually do it. So I would procrastinate and procrastinate and procrastinate and put things off and put things off. And now I feel that same resistance around coaching and making music or sorry, not making music, making videos and doing like, Instagram content and doing YouTube shorts. And like, I feel that same resistance, but now I understand that that is the path that you're actually supposed to go down. And so I, I started rereading that book recently because I wanted to read it in the, with the perspective of YouTube involved and with the perspective of this coaching stuff involved. Cause it's super interesting, man. The, whenever I make a video, right? Whenever I go to make a video, <laughs> I feel the resistance of like, fuck, I don't really feel like making a video. And then I start making the video and I like within a minute, I get into a flow state. And then it's, and then after making the video, I'm like, Oh, I remember why I love doing this. And the same thing happens with coaching calls. Whenever I take on a new client and I'm about to go into the first coaching call, I always have this like resistance. I'm like, what if it doesn't go well? My, like the anxiety always starts to kick in. And then within like two minutes of that first call, we're flowing and I'm like, man, this is why I love to do this. And then even with like clients who I let's like, let's say yesterday I had a fourth call with someone. So it's the end of his month and he signed on for another six. Actually, he was going to sign on for, um, just one. And then I, I really enjoy having this guy as a client. So he signed on for six and I'm super excited about it because I really, really enjoy being on the calls with him. And with <laughs> even with the fourth call, I was like, man, I'm I'm excited for the call, but I'm just like I feel this resistance every single time I'm about to hop on a call. Every time I'm about to do something that will bring me closer to my goals, I feel resistance. And I think that resistance comes from. Every time I do something like that, I'm breaking a limiting belief in myself. I'm breaking the mold of my past self image. So it doesn't feel right. But every single time I do it, it does feel more right. But it also has more resistance. It's super weird. The it's kind of like that book, The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday. Anytime you're faced with an obstacle, that is what you have to overcome because it'll teach you the things that you need to know to overcome it. You know what I mean? Because then when you find that obstacle again, because it will come up, because it's all just feelings. Obstacles are usually just feelings. If it's a physical obstacle, then you deal with it in the moment. But if it's not, then it's something that you have to figure out internally. And so when you come up to that obstacle again, you'll have the skills to deal with it every time. So I don't know, man, the, the resistance is super interesting. Because it happens all the time, like every single time, but every single time I break through the resistance, there's fulfillment on the other side. It's kind of like that quote behind your, behind your greatest fears is your greatest fulfillment behind your greatest fears is your greatest success. Like those fears and that resistance and that overwhelming feeling is where you gain the worth breaking through that is where you gain so much. So yeah, man, I've been feeling a little overwhelmed, but I'm like, still pushing through it. And normally, this is where I would say like, Oh, I'm feeling burnt out. But it's not a burnout feeling. There's no burnout. Like, it's not that I want to stop. It's that I'm like, everything is coming to fruition, everything that I wanted to do and everything that I've wanted to build is starting to come true. And it's like, 
I don't want to say surprising, but it's like, holy fuck, like, this is actually like a big change now and I have to adapt. And I've, over the past 10 months, learning discipline and building discipline and learning just different mindsets and like instilling different core values and beliefs in myself. I've come to like, be okay with that change. Like, I've come to expect it. And then like, now I need to, I've learned to adapt, right? In the past, I would always kind of like turn shy away from any kind of adaptation that had to happen and just try and stay as comfortable as possible. But now I've learned to adapt to any uncomfortable situation and try to embrace it almost like lean into it. So it's just interesting, bro. The growth is growth is exciting as fuck, dude. Growth is so exciting because if me a year ago could see me now, and be like, how the fuck did this motherfucker turn into that? I can only imagine how me now will look at me in a year. It's going to be dope. I hope you're doing well. Filming this video made me feel a lot better. And it's just like I said, anytime there's that resistance, doing something that's inseparably connected to your, to your purpose will make you feel better every single time. Every single time. So... I hope you're having a good day. I hope you're having a good morning, afternoon, evening. I don't know when you're watching this. I hope you got something out of it. I hope I said something that maybe made you think or changed your perspective. I'm going to go hit a pole workout, bro. I'm going to go hit a pole workout. Take care, bro.